If you search the Pygame documentation for the word shader, you will find that there is not a single result. Many people want to use shaders with Pygame or downright avoid it because they think they can't use shaders to begin with. And hey, I even said in my Pygame's performance video that you shouldn't use shaders with Pygame. However, I ended up implementing shaders into my Pygame project Vagrant. So what's going on here? Why isn't it in the documentation and why do I advise against doing it even though I did it myself? Well, here's the thing. Pygame is essentially a Python wrapper for SDL, which is, at least in SDL1, built on software rendering. Software rendering is the rendering that is performed on the CPU as opposed to using the GPU. Most games nowadays use the GPU very heavily to speed up rendering and achieve the visuals you are accustomed to nowadays. Most notably in relation to this video, GPUs are used to apply shaders. That said, there are some downsides to using the GPU over just using the CPU like what you see with Pygame and SDL1. This is a bit of an oversimplification, but generally speaking, developing games just using the CPU is significantly simpler and quicker than trying to use the GPU due to the CPU's overhead. Now that you know a bit of the background behind Pygame, I can explain the situation with shaders. As I mentioned a moment ago, Shaders need the GPU to function. You could technically achieve the effects of a shader on the CPU, but it's thousands of times slower. Since one of the main benefits of Pygame is that you don't have to deal with the overhead of trying to work with the GPU, you start to lose out on Pygame's benefits once you try to bring the GPU in. This is why I advised against using shaders with Pygame in that earlier video. There are circumstances like mine where I may recommend using shaders if you know what you're doing. But I didn't go into it in that earlier video since it's not really applicable to most beginners. This still leaves the question of just how you implement shaders with Pygame though. The trick here is that I have to use Pygame in combination with OpenGL. More specifically, I use PyOpenGL, the Python interface for OpenGL, in a Pygame context using the pygame.opengl display flag when creating the display. As soon as you do this, all rendering onto the display or window must be done through OpenGL. This is why shaders don't ever show up in the Pygame documentation. It's because the shader code is actually in PyOpenGL. This gives us a bit of a problem though. If you have to render to the display with OpenGL, you're missing out on all of Pygame's rendering functionality. At this point, Pygame is just there for window management, audio, and input. In this situation, you're working with OpenGL more so than Pygame, but there's a bit of a trick I use to make it so that I'm almost completely working with Pygame instead of OpenGL while still getting the benefits of OpenGL. I've mentioned that you have to render to the display with OpenGL, but that actually doesn't stop me from rendering in memory with Pygame. Since I can't render to the display surface, I just render everything to a surface I created. With everything on that surface, I can convert it to an OpenGL texture and do the final rendering step onto the display using OpenGL. During this final rendering step, I can apply GLSL shaders as you would in just about anything else, like most game engines or graphics libraries. I converted the surface to texture conversion and rendering code into its own simplified module that's just meant to let me use GLSL shaders with Pygame without having to think about OpenGL. The module I wrote can be hooked up in a matter of minutes with any of my old Pygame games, so I decided to test it out on Aeroblaster as soon as I had it working. I chose few shaders to make Aeroblaster look like it was on a CRT TV. I won't really go into depth here since it's not really the focus of this video, but this effect is achieved by blending a moving noise texture and a CRT display texture with the main game's output. As you can see, there's also a warping effect that gives the display a curved appearance. This is just done by moving some of the pixels towards the center of the display in the shader. Anyways, the main purpose of creating this shader module was to allow me to add shaders to Vagrant. I'll be working on a proper devlog soon to share how I created the shaders that are currently in Vagrant, so keep a lookout for future videos if you're interested in that. If you want to see my code for shaders, you can try, but I advise against it in many cases since it's tailored for my specific use case and it has no documentation. The GitHub repo will be in the description if you're still interested though. It may serve as a good reference for using shaders with PyOpenGL and Pygame in general though just because there are so few references out there on the internet. 
This video is kind of similar to my Pygame Grass video because the subject is something that's too complex to go fully in depth on in a single video. Since you have to do a ton of stuff in OpenGL to implement shaders in Pygame, I'd have to essentially create a PyOpenGL tutorial to show you how everything works. This video omits a ton of random little details I had to deal with, so it's difficult to achieve this from just watching this video. I also happen to be a bit of a newbie to OpenGL in general at the moment, so I wouldn't consider myself qualified to teach OpenGL. If you're interested in the subject though, I'd recommend looking into general OpenGL tutorials since Pi OpenGL bindings are nearly identical to the bindings you would see when working with C or C++. That said, it seems we've reached the end of this video. Please subscribe, thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you in the next video.